Very well. So we begin our uh, new episode with, of course, Jude Bellingham. Yes, very. We have an update about Jude Bellingham. Very weird, but yes, it is happening. And of course, Dortmund are really, really struggling to keep him. What exactly is the reason? How exactly Arsenal can get him? We will find out in this episode. So, of course, let's talk about the first news that we got. Is of course, according to James Olly, Arsenal have had a very have enjoyed a close relationship with Arteta. Aubameyang has enjoyed a close relationship with Arteta, but several incidents have eroded his trust in the player. And sources say that timekeeping has repeatedly been an issue. Something Arteta feels undermines the more disciplined environment he's trying to create. Arsenal are willing to listen to offers for PM Rick Aubameyang in January. Sources claim the situation is not beyond repair, but the club are ready to sound out interest from Europe's top clubs to go to gauge whether a deal that suits all parties is possible. So PM Rick Aubameyang is available on sale, but there is there's definitely a way back for him. Let's see if that is going to be happening or not. So, fantastic night for one man. That was Charlie Patino. Score on debut. Well, his first Arsenal Academy product to score on his debut for Arsenal since Sanchez Watt, who scored against West Bromwich Albion in 2009. That is the fantastic news that we have. So, of course, let's talk about some other news that we have. Of course, new players getting linked to Arsenal. But first, let's talk about Arteta on what he is most proud of after two years of being at Arsenal. He says, I'm most proud of the atmosphere, environment and culture we have around the club and sense of unity we have from everybody who works at the club and the sense of unity we have with our supporters that I think has come a long, long way. Please don't go back to that. Uh, he was asked on the possibility of whether you know you could play close behind closed doors. He says, please don't go back to that stage because we have experienced that and it is something we don't like. So hopefully it's not what happens. It's a different sport. Football is all about sharing it with people and having fans around the stadiums. When it is not, it is a completely different sport and the competition gets lost. It is not the same. So Mikel Arteta wants support. So moving on, Charlie Patino on Instagram says, The best day of my life and an early Christmas present. Thanks to all the fans for their amazing support. What a night. Oh, Charlie, we also believe the same. What a night. That was fantastic in every bit. Talking about Martin Odegaard, Mikel Arteta said he's more and more important. He's now, he's playing now almost every minute and with big performances as well. He's adding goals, he's adding assists, so he's influencing the game a lot. Also about Cedric Soares, he says, Cedric Soares tweeted these two images with the, with the caption, win, assist, really happy to help the team move in, in the, into the League Cup semis. Let's go. Well, Arteta on if Aubameyang will be involved in the upcoming games says he wasn't selected for today's game. So Arteta is pretty much avoiding the question in a lot of press conferences that he's actually coming uh, coming across. So talking about Pepe's lack of minutes, Mikel Arteta says... Oh wait, what? Okay, we'll talk about that. So he says that about Nicola Pepe, it is hard for everyone who doesn't play. What they have to do is when they have the minutes, show on the pitch that they can do it and they are ready when the team needs him. And Enketia on Charlie Patino says, Yeah, he makes me feel old. It's amazing for him. He's a great lad with a great future ahead of him. I was delighted for him to get on the score sheet. It was a great opportunity to get your debut and impress. And I think he did that today. And moving on, talking about more stuff, Arteta on trying to keep Enketia at the club. He says, we are trying. It's not about anything else but minutes. He, he wants game time, he wants to be on that field and that is the only reason to say, can I do it here? That's the question, we all want him to stay. Every time we have played him, he has responded with goals, with assists, with his work rate and he continues to do so. He's getting better and better every day. He has the smell for goals. So, would you want Arsenal to give a new contract to Eddie and Ketia? Let me know in the comments what you guys think about it. And Arteta on, on Patino scoring on his debut, he says he's a player with a lot of personality. I'm delighted for him. He's a kid that we like so much and to have his debut like that and score a goal is something special. Arteta on the fans singing Patino's name before he came on the pitch. He says, I know, I know. I think that, I think that is very positive. They heard about him and know what he can become and now we have to cook him slowly. Today was a good start, I think. Talking about the win, victory, Arteta says, yes, it was great. We are in the semi-finals. We had some phases in the first half. We started okay. Scored two goals and then started not to respect our basics well enough. And we had a period where we suffered. We picked the level up in the second half and we won. You know who was the most happiest guy and had a proud dad moment with Charlie Patino scoring? 
Jack Wilshere. Shared this on his Instagram stories. Hard work paying off. Love it, Charlie boy. Oh, we love you guys. <laughs> Unbelievable. Martin Odegaard uh, had an interview with Jean Age Fortov after the game. He says, Martin Odegaard, there was an interview. He says, I've come into a fantastic team with lots of young and exciting players. We are a team that's heading up and forwards in the huge in a huge club that's supposed to be at the top. We are a hungry group of players and it feels good to be here. Well, Eddie Nketia on his hat-trick said, It's a great feeling. Obviously, I want to say a big thank you to my teammates. I had some really good assists today. So I just had to be in the right place. As I said, it's great to get my first hat-trick for Arsenal senior team. Well, did you know that, uh, that Eddie Nketiah scored 10 goals in Carabao Cup, 8 goals for Arsenal and 2 for Leeds United while playing for them on loan. So, Eddie Nketiah, you know, because like I shared this on his Instagram stories, Carabao legend. Yes, he is a Carabao Cup legend. <laughs> just joking, by the way, but yes. The st star boys of Hayland are just phenomenal. They're the next level, guys. It's just too good to be true. But Eddie Nketiah's hat-trick speaks volumes of what he wants to do. With Aubameyang going, would you still... The, the question still remains. Would you want... Eddie and Ketia to sign a new deal, at least a three-year deal or a long-term deal with Arsenal. What is your take on the whole situation? Let me know in the comments. I will be definitely waiting for you guys. So, Matthias Swanberg. Now, there's this guy who plays for Bologna and I've, I've spoken about this. So, according to Carlino Bologna, Arsenal, Atalanta, Milan and Inter are all interested in signing the midfielder. Now, the midfielder, his contract expires in 2023 and there was a firm belief at the club that he had his heart set out on signing an extension. That has, hasn't happened and he's unlikely to take, uh, he's, he's unlikely to stay. So, most importantly, a lot of clubs are interested for him. Now, here's the problem. Now, Milan showed willingness to make an offer of around 15 million euros a year ago, but Bologna were not in favour of letting their key player leave. In the last transfer window, the best offer Bologna received was around 8 million euros, which was clearly insufficient. They also did not entertain any offers because they had no intention to deprive themselves of a player of Swanberg's qualities. Now, this comes in Resto del Carlino. So, yes, interesting player according to me. Very, very, very good actually. I've seen him play. Arteta says he's not decided the squad for Norwich yet. So, no decision on if Aubameyang will be involved or not. That was tweeted by Simon Collings. So, no, Aubameyang, at least for now. Moving on, Adidas in cooperation with Transport for London will release a special pre-match shirt design inspired by the famous transport seats to mark the 90th anniversary of the founding of the London Underground. Would you want to see how it will look like? Well, that's how it will look like. Yep, that's the training gear. Oh, wow. Arsenal, my God. It's, 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 uh, yeah, New Kit FC, man. It's just... They released some really outrageously beautiful looking kits, man. I just love my club. But yes, <laughs> they need to be performing on the pitch as well. Yeah. Moving on, let's talk about Arsenal breaking some advertising rules. Now, here's the reality. Arsenal broke advertising rules when promoting their cryptocurrency sponsorship deals. Uh, rules watchdog. Now, this ruling reiterates concerns the AST raised when Arsenal first entered into a partnership with a cryptocurrency firm. If you know fan tokens, yeah, if you've been part of that, I'm sorry, you've lost your money. So, uh, clubs should not be allowed to use football's popularity to push an inherently high risk product. If these partnerships are to continue, then greater effort must be made to ensure marketing materials protects young supporters and informs fans of downsides involving in buying tokens. In summary, if you're an Arsenal fan, to be extremely cautious of socios, you don't need it to engage with Arsenal and you have a high chance of losing your money. So that's that. Apparently, Arsenal have pulled off their partnership. So, yes. So that's the news, that is the views, and that is the update about certain things. So it looks like Dortmund are fearing that their main player Jude Bellingham might leave them. And to prevent that, Boris, Borussia Dortmund are aiming to sign his brother, Job Bellingham, in order to persuade Jude to remain at the club. That's according to Football Insider. Well, Dortmund are negotiating with Jude over a new contract amid Premier League interest and his superb form so far this season. He has a contract until 2025, but Dortmund are reportedly keen to tie him to longer terms and would bring his 16-year-old brother to Germany to help sweeten the deal. Will Bellingham take it? I don't know. Should Bellingham take it? No ways. 
pick a club and Arsenal are hot for for a midfielder, I think it will be a fantastic um, a, a deal made in heaven. So. It looks like uh, his agent, uh, well, Jonathan David's agent has actually opened up right now. Now, his agent, Nick Mavromaras, spoke to Radio Canada's So Soccer podcast. He says, Jonathan was very confident from the start as a teenager. Uh, at the time, he absolutely wanted to go to Europe. He didn't want to consider anything from MLS, even though Vancouver worked hard to sign him. For us, the goal is to finish the season with Lil, but this will be his last season there for several reasons. I think the Premier League is a great option for him. I think he likes Spain a lot too. These two leagues are the main priorities for him, but nothing is being ruled out. You never know with Paris Saint-Germain or the big Italian clubs. It's normal that all these big clubs are interested in the top scorer in League One. But I tell you, but I can tell you that today there's no official offer. So no official offer. Two leagues that he might look at. One is Premier League and second is La Liga. What are your thoughts on Jude, uh, on Jude Bellingham coming to Arsenal? Well, I would take him in a heartbeat. But what about Jonathan David? Let me know what you guys think about it. I'll see you in the next one. Until then, cheers and you have a good night.